Hi, I'm Cody Alexander with Match Quarters. Welcome to another episode of the Art of X Show. We're continuing our series on teaching coverages. Last week, we went through the basics of coverage, primarily focusing on middle of the field open, so split field coverage where we have a box and we have a triangle box. To me, I call that sky. That is quarters. We're going to go over sky coverage today. Cloud would be our triangle coverage. We're going to go through that whole cloud family, kind of the basics, what I'm looking for from the corner, what I'm looking for from the safety. So we're getting our box coverage, we're getting our triangle coverage, and we're really digging in to how those things are being taught. Now, the way that I teach my quarters is unique to me. I've developed it since when I was at Baylor. I've taken that system from Baylor and then have kind of evolved it into stealing from other things, stealing other terms from other coaches like we all do. But the basis and the anchor of this is really defending the Art Brile system on a daily basis, learning from kind of a Jimmy Johnson quarter system uh, via Dave Wanstat, via Phil Bennett, uh, who also worked for Rex Ryan. So that was kind of the me meshing of my understanding of defense when I got to Baylor is we have this unbelievably hard offense to defend, even in practice. So I, I'll never forget we had – uh, you know, one of my first times I had to, I had to do all the scripting for the, for the seven on seven and, and, and do that all post-practice team, anything like that. So when we're in fall camp, we're doing a lot of good and good. And then again, when we did it in spring, we would have like a, a 15 minute seven on seven, good on good period. And we would probably end up with almost 30 to 40 plays. So we're getting almost a half worth of plays in a seven on seven and having to go through that. Uh, my fingers got really good at typing. Uh, so I, to me, that is kind of the anchoring of that system and, and how we develop that quarter system. And then obviously the adjustments you have at the high school level, when you have play Players that are not Division One athletes that are not playing, going on to play in the NFL or professional football uh, in Canada and other places. So, how do you do that when you have a kid that doesn't, that's not even going to sniff the field on college? He's going to go off to college to become an accountant. You know, he's not going to off to college, even if it's a D three or D two school, uh, to go continue his playing career. So that's kind of the adjustments, and then that's where we have that's kind of a marriage of it of, of an evolution of ten years of coaching all types of athletes i've had division one corners i've had division one safeties i've also had kids again that are our accountants now uh, and are not playing football and we're not going to play football after that last friday night so that's kind of the approach that i want to take i'm going to go through hey in this system they talk, tell it this way or hey this is another term that you can use for that and i'll try to highlight those as we go through because i think it's important one to never assume that somebody understands your language. Your language is unique to your ecosystem and your upbringing in football. So this is my system, but I would never assume that you know everything about it, especially if this is the first time you're hearing me or you're visiting this and, and it's like, hey, I want to learn about quarters. Uh, we're starting from scratch. So I'm going to go through all of the system, the terms. I'm not going to try and talk over anybody or coach speak anything. I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible, like I always do that's the brand of match quarters making the complex simple so that to me that's where we're going to start and the foundations of our coverage again I, I talked about this in the last podcast our foundations are a box and a triangle so that's sky and that's cloud that is our foundations from there we can kind of do anything i talk about safety spokes and being able to kind of manipulate the ba the boundary safety or the backside safety the safety away from the passing strength to kind of get these different things and how you can teach your safeties to close a post out of a middle field open just because you play a middle of the field open defense does not mean that that post is always open you can teach your safeties specifics off of route combinations and off of what they are seeing from the slot or the, their receiver or their indicator, their key to be able to then go close the post. So let's get into sky and cloud. First off, we are going to start with sky. Sky is your basic coverage. It is a box coverage. When do we want to run sky? Number one and number two are wide. I always tell the kids like a wide open sky, we want to run sky so if one and two are wide we want to be running sky the safety can't reach number one on a fade route i always like to because i've you always get the young kid that's like oh i can i can work hash the sideline and i'm like okay well let's do that so i line them up at 10 i put them i put a cone on the hash and then i have another player go 30 yards down the field and stand outside the numbers on the 30 from from wherever I set the ball 
And I show that I show that safety. And I said, remember, the quarterback is going to have a three step drop and then he's going to throw that ball. Can you get to that spot? And what what I'll do is I'll, I'll throw that ball over there. And really, when you do that, you're really showing and illustrating to those safeties that that is a lot of space and that maybe we probably need to be in sky. Look, the best coverage in ball is cover one, right? Because it's man coverage, it's easy, and you close the post. Well, if you you want to try and play man as much as you possibly can, and that's why you play sky. Sky is essentially man with rules. That's how we're playing it. The corner is going to take all of number one for the most part, unless he runs underneath right now. And I always get asked this all the time. Well, what if you get a, a shallow from number one? Typically, if you are getting a shallow from number one, one and two are tight you're getting some sort of a mesh, a drive route. They're they're bringing everything into, into the system. Look, offensive coordinators, they fancy themselves as the smartest guys in the room. But in reality, a lot of the time, you can, you can kind of have an idea of what they're trying to do conceptually from their splits and from, their, from where they are. So one and two are close. Then I, now I'm thinking, okay, I'm, one might be able to run underneath. We are. We're probably going to get some sort of a switch. If one and two are wide from each other, one, they're either baiting us to try and throw a fade out, right? So if they, and, and typically you don't see that unless the slot receiver is inside the hash. So they will oversplit you on purpose. And if you are a cover two base team, you run palms or you run two read or what I call cloud. And that is your base coverage. That's what your number one coverage is. When you go out and you teach it day one, that's the number one coverage. And that's what everybody's running. If you are that you're going to start seeing over splits. You're going to get one on the top of the numbers and they're going to start sneaking number two into the hash and they're not running mess routes. What they're trying to do is get that safety and that corner over split, which is why you have to have a sky tag. You, If you are a two read team, there's nothing wrong with that. There are so many high school teams that base out of two read or what, again, what I call cloud and that is fine, but you have to be able to have a coverage that also fits with what you're trying to do. And, and if you leave your players out to, to dry because of an oversplit, you're going to get beat in that whole shot. You're going to get beat outside just because they're going to be able to option that. And that corner's not going to have any kind of any kind of reaction time. He's going to be oversplit. So let's go over terms. So this is essentially sky coverage. Mod means outside man, outside or deep. That is a corner term. And typically the way that I teach this is we have a passive, aggressive, and then kind of like an in-between. Okay, so we're going to have a passive is the first thing that we're going to start teaching. I like to start teaching off coverage first. The reason why I like to teach it is because it is more technical than teaching press. Press is an easy fix. Most people that are playing corner understand how to play basketball. They're usually your point guards. They're usually your shooting guards. They're usually your defensive guys on, on the basketball team, right? They're fast. They're twitchy. That's why they're playing corner. So for me, press is easy. I can get to press easily. And two, when you press, you're eliminating route choices. You get slants and you get fades. That's what you're going to get. So to me, that's easy. I can work slant and fade releases all day long. What I want to do is work the technical schemes of off, the techniques of off coverage, eyes, reading two through to the mesh. How can we get that? Our slide steps, being eye discipline, foot discipline, understanding departure speed, departure angle, the tempo the receiver's coming at you. All of those things have to be on point when you play off coverage because if you are not with your eyes or your feet you're going to get beat and so that's why i always start with mod coverage match again we talked about this on the last podcast i use three terms match carry deliver match means move with your man it's essentially man right we're matching it until something else happens it's not man it's not meg man everywhere he goes push alert is key especially when you get a number three receiver to your side. So the, the running back is set to the two receiver side, a tight end sniffer is set to the two receiver side. That is an automatic push alert that needs to be communicated between the nickel and the Mike linebacker right there. So that doesn't mean it's going to happen, but we need to, Hey, we have three to our side alert, push alert, push or push alert carry again. That's an, that's another term we want to carry vertically. I want to try and punch And This is talking to the nickel defender, 
I, or even the mic, if we do get a push alert, I want to punch with that outside hand on that hip of that receiver. I want to play basketball. I want to make that receiver run the hump, go outside, elongate that route, assist the safety. Okay. I'm not turning and running. This is not man match. I'm not taking that inside hand and, and, and ripping it through and trail technique that guy. I want to play square as much as I possibly can with vision on three and then to the mesh. That's what I want. Deliver anything back. So again, talking to linebacker play, nickel, Mike, if I have three to me, I don't have to deliver anything in. So if two works inside and three is to me, I know the mic's already opening to this side. I don't have to deliver that thing back in aggressively. I can then cut to number one. So that is, that's kind of the key there. We want to work with the receiver back until he's picked up by the next man now if three is away from me i don't have a push alert and i'm the nickel then i need to work back with that the safety will stair step on top of that and and we will make sure it doesn't in turn and turn into an usam which is under sam over mike a climb route these, these are your y cross routes that you see a lot where they want to they know your rules are if 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 two goes under the Sam, snap your eyes to one. The problem with that is, is that a lot of these guys are now running these climb routes. So Usam, under Sam, over Mike, and that safety is responsible for a vertical. That's why when we talk about verticals, it's over the overhang. So if I get a climb route, I want to stair step over it, just like they're climbing the step, right? Under, over, right? I want to, I want to stair step on top of that. They're bringing me to the post or they're bringing me and I can nail down as he comes vertical through to me. So up, that's, again, we use match, carry, deliver, up, out, and in. Those are the directions of the receivers. Cap is, in, I'm in charge of the, the vertical, so I like to tell the DBs who's capped, right? The corner is capping number one. The nickel in sky is capped by the safety. He doesn't have to carry verticals all the way through. He's not responsible for the up of number two. He is only responsible for carrying it until he gets pushed off or until he delivers it to the, the safety. Post control or what I call sway on the hash. Post control just means hold the hash, sway on the hash, and work to know the field if you are not attacked vertically. Uh, a nice part, a nice drill to work off of this, especially like with the fade out, because what are you going to get if you run quarters? You're going to get fade out. They're attacking the flats is once I get two out, I'm going to snap my eyes to one. If one shadow is inside the numbers, meaning that he had gave an inside release. Now I know that I'm probably going to get a curl or I'm getting some sort of a post. If I get an outside shadow, so the shadow is outside of the numbers, then I know it's a fade route. And then I need to sit on the hash because I might be getting a post or a cross or a dig coming from the other side. Let's go ahead and close that post. Or I can go ahead and if the quarterback's shoulders are turned and they're looking at that out route, I can then banana over that and assist the nickel. In my system of sky, the nickel is responsible for chasing the out of number two. That's a little bit different than if you are a nine-man spacing team and you're playing Meg quarter. So what is Meg quarter? Meg quarter just means four lock, right? Corners locked on number one. Safety's locked on number two, out and up. The nickel is attached to the box, meaning that if he gets any kind of run read, he is going to go. I call that mix. Okay, Meg is a technique. I can mag the corner, which means I just want you to get up and press. So that instead of giving a press tag, because we use that in cloud and we'll talk about that, I give a mag tag and I just tell them, hey, in this, we want to mag it. But that allows the corner to then lock on number one, but the nickel and the safety don't really change responsibility. If we want to play nine man spacing, we give a mix tag. It also goes with us if we are blitzing. Anytime we lose the overhang, we want to give a mix tag. So I'm not in uh, uh, the middle of the field closed world. So we don't run fire zones. So we want to base everything out of quarters. This would be like uh, your big 12s in the saving system or what I have talked about with half field zones. So if we are losing the nickel, right? The mic is going to sling. He's going to play the sling too, right? He's going to work to number two after he gets his run read. So we're not going to have immediate help outside. So we mix it. Mix means man means we're mixing it up in the box. So that is our, our nine man spacing tag and also a, an easy way, interchangeable parts, right? An easy way to create our half field zone coverages, because if I'm not losing the overhang, we're just playing sky cloud. If I lose the overhang, that's when we give the mix tag. Other names that you might have heard of is mod four, 
four, just in general, hammer or box. Those are kind of the other terms that you will see for that. If I want to play pure zone, we will call rail it. And typically we will do that if we're getting vertical switches into the boundary. I'll just say, hey, instead of playing cloud into the boundary or instead of playing like regular press sky or something like that, let's go ahead and let's play rail it and let them switch release off of that and let that overhang play bang to buzz, which is essentially collision and carry number two. And then once he tries to go vertical, slough off and then work. The key with these overhangs too is, they are staying square and they want to they want to punch with that outside hand on two, but I want to get my eyes to number one. Once I know it's a pass, I want to punch and then get my vision to one. Is it a, is it a smash route? Am I going to need to come off? Am I getting a slant? Am I getting something back inside? Because a lot of times, if you again, if you are a two read team, you're going to get the slant what I call a, a slam route. You're going to get the, the slant with the corner. You're going to get it, uh, kind of a bender inside. You're going to get something attacking inside, trying to bring that corner in. And then you're trying to get that, that nickel to climb vertically and run under it. So what we try and do is teach those overhangs is as I'm at, once I get a run pass read and I'm punching the, the, the hip of that slot, I want to get my eyes to one. That's why we want to have smash tags given out call. I like directional calls because it tells them where to go. Right. I get, I like visual visual cues. Uh, they're verbal, but they're visual, like visual words out. Okay. I need to keep working out. And so that's where, that's where we come from. When we talk about what let's go, let's go over kind of the fundamentals of stance alignment. Cause you know, everybody just always talks about alignment, assignment, you know, keys, what are all of those things? Let's start with the corners in an off alignment. I like a heel to toe stance. I like that. I like that outside foot up inside foot back we want to be open to the inside where are we vulnerable inside so we are going to maintain inside leverage we want that inside foot back so that we can work flat and inside we already are opened up to the inside i prefer a slight tilt when we play mod or off whether it's off man or off quarters i like a slight tilt i want to be able to see two through the mesh for a quick read Okay. And this is where the confusing part is because a lot of people are like, how do you, can you play quarters with playing man technique? And then how do you play a uh, man technique with zone eyes? I'm not playing zone eyes. I'm playing a quick read. And then my eyes go back to the number one receiver. I always make sure to explain to the corners quarters or sky is man with rules. You're getting a quick read. Two is going to tell you what the route combination is going to be. If two is out, I'm probably going to get a vertical by number one. Now I need to know, is it a speed release? Okay, it's a fade route. Is it inside? Now it might be a curl. It might be a flat. It might be kind of those, those digs. Uh, if they feel like, you know, those curls kind of turn into digs if they feel like it's man coverage. Shoulders, though, are square. Yes, I'm tilted, but my shoulders are going to be square. Shoulders are your rudders. The moment your shoulders turn, that's the direction you're going to go in. Remember, you're backpedaling or you're sliding, you're working backwards. So the moment that we flip our hips, and, and this is a trend that happens with younger DBs, is that if from a tilt stance, they want to get that, they want to get completely parallel with the sideline. The moment that that happens, they're going to start working to the sideline. Well, where are we, where is our, our biggest threat inside? How can I protect the inside on a post route? I used to have a corner all the time. He couldn't defend a post route and he was got, he's really frustrated about it. And a very talented kid uh, should have been able to defend post routes. He's like, coach, I don't understand. I don't understand. I said, coach, I, I was like, it's simple. You're turning your shoulders. You're getting parallel to the sideline. There's no way now you can defend slants, elongated slants from the outside or even post routes. You know, this is why I'm not a big fan of even in cover two, that squat technique where you're clicking your heels and your butts to the sideline, your backs to the sideline. How are you going to play slant routes? You have to have a drop step in order to go inside. So I now have to work out to go in. I don't want that. I want my outside foot planted at all times. I also teach that like this, if we're getting verticals, I want to zone turn into that. I'm already getting a quick read. I don't want to have to turn back around, right? My hips are already open to the field. I think of it like you're running a, a four by one, 
right? Most of your corners are going to be sprinters. You're going to be mo mostly on your four by one team. When you're getting a handoff, you're trying to tilt yourself down so that you can see as well as already be working vertical. And that's why I like this tilted stance. We're still in a tuck position and we're still trying to sit in our chair. I like fingertips to the knees. I don't like hands up because the first thing that happens is they get back down. Uh, and, and if they're already down towards their knee, at least they're down. I don't like it straight and I don't like them back we're not trying to get into i don't like wings we're not trying to fly i don't like the thumbs to the armpits okay if you have problems with that like if you're you, you, they're getting their elbows out and they look like a chicken wing is to put uh roll up some your get from your trainers get some towels and have them roll them up and then put them underneath their armpits uh kind of right there under like right underneath the armpits where their rib cages start to work out that if you put it right there and have them work there, if they start getting their chicken wings, those things are going to drop on the ground. It's going to be, and that's a nice way of doing that. Again, I don't like the prayer hands and I don't like the hands up, but they need to be on the table or at least, at least by, by uh, the knee. And that's just personal preference from just what I've seen with, with my kids. Uh, so again, going with the open stance, what we're trying to get out of this is a slight tilt, heel to toe, triangle read. I can see the number one receiver as well as the slot. All of my weight is on the front foot. I'm inside alignment, depending on split, right? Traditional basic split. If the receiver is on top of the numbers, I want to be inside eye. That, then that is where we want to be. If he starts working in anything past the apex of the hash and the numbers, then we are outside alignment because most likely he's going to work inside or he's trying to dig me out and create a lot of space for the fade route. So when we before we talk about safeties, Typically, the offenses now that we're seeing are 11 personnel based, either Y off or Y in the C or a sniffer or an H back, which is going to be inside the core. So I like to always start off before we do anything with the safeties is, hey, let's talk about back placement, where we are going to have the tight end and then how that relates back to us. So if we get a slant right to steal from the Chad Morris system, which is really popular here in Texas. If we get some sort of a slant or we get a split formation, which is what I call it, that is typically where we get split zone, slice read, which is just arc read with the quarterback, power strong, especially if you have a sniffer, he's inside the box. They would like to get those guys inside. Not a lot of people like, unless you're an odd front team, not a lot of people like keeping that tight end right there in that C gap like slotted and then working out typically they'll bring him either in the box right behind the tackle or into the b gap in a typical snipper so crotched to outside that is typically where you're getting more or less outside plays or the tight end is giving himself space to come back on some sort of a counter or a split zone if he's inside that's insert power uh, or kind of what I like to call the 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 reverse the reverse counter where you get the kick out by the tight end and you get the it's basically it's basically power but it looks like split zoners and it looks like counter stretch buck if he's outside as well anytime we get a stack we're thinking downhill run game or power toss uh, lead option, things like that. Duo, especially if they get into a bunch. We played a team a couple years ago. That's all they did. They got in these bunch, and all they were trying to run is duo. Everybody down block, and they were just trying to run duo. So that's that. That is usually what you get. Counter GY weak. Um, QB stretch arc anything with QB run game because they got those two guys. Obviously, be alert for jet motion when anytime you get a stack. One, it was interesting. I've played teams where you literally could tell what the play was going to be off of the backfield and we could call it out. They wanted downhill power. So they ran same side power and same side counter. So if it was stacked, we were getting the power. If it was split, we were getting the counter and we were able to, we were able to do that and really counter looks the exact same as split zone. Uh, you're just not getting the pull. So split zone and counter to one side and then we knew if they got stacked we were getting power or insert so we just really it, you you already know where where the guy's going to go so if it was split the tight end was always going to come across if it was stacked the tight end was always going to stay front side and so then we could kind of game plan off of that so it's always important to understand one is it stack or split two 
is it is the tight end inside or outside is he a snipper is he a tight end is he an ace back what is he right so let's get into the playbook let's get into what it looks like formationally uh so again when we run sky coverage if we were just going to say hey we want to run sky across the board then normally what you're going to get is a rail it tag into the boundary because of space right uh, and then you're going to get a regular sky tag to the field what i try and do and this goes back to spacing which i've, I've done a, a podcast on spacing so if you're interested in seven man spacing which is what we're playing here not nine man spacing this is Nar this is not narduzzi quarters we're not playing mix we're playing sky so it's this is going to be seven man spacing you go ahead and check that out uh, so where are we in terms of alignment corners are going to be at six yards inside eye off their split rules, obviously, dividers, where is the receiver in relation? If he's very far outside, so again, if we're playing a team that likes to run the Art Brile system and they get those uber splits and he's way outside, we're staying, we're trying to stay attached to the numbers as much as possible. For the for the overhangs, I want to be in a full cover down. If the running back is away from me, I can I can kind of minus back to the, the box. I can kind of work closer to an apex. We don't ever want to go any further than an apex. Uh, one thing that I have done is if we do start getting those over splits and they're they're just trying, they're trying to run the ball and they're trying to sneak that slot back towards in, knowing that your overhang is supposed to be inside leverage. If that overhang feels really close to the box, he can play it from outside leverage. He's just going to bang through number two. Uh, he's going to work hard through number two. I actually like it outside, not running bracket, which we will talk about in another episode, but playing it with outside leverage, especially when it's close to the box, it really defines that block for that receiver. He has to then turn out and he has to show it right now, or he goes and he cracks the mic and the Sam and the safety don't have anybody blocking them. So that's kind of an adjustment. I like, again, if the running back is to me, full cover down, tip to tip. If the running back's away, I want to kind of minus towards that box. I can no, no closer than apex. If, if they really try and reduce that slot a lot, uh, whether they're running mesh or they're trying to block me, they're trying to run quarterback power or run game, some sort of that, and they just really try and get an oversplit, then that's when we can play it from outside leverage. Safeties are going to be at 10 yards and it's a step off, which is a step or place. Um, and I have, I have uh, in my DB 101 playlist, you can find these on YouTube. So go to, go to YouTube, look up match quarters, go to DB 101 playlist. It should be on my channel page and it will explain and have images of all these techniques. So again, corners are in a slide technique. That's more of a loose, more of an open, more of a tempoed step off and it's with a tilt whereas safeties are square it's a step replace step back replace step back replace front foot inside inside foot is up outside foot is back because we're working out and where corners are working in and then again you, you know your linebackers depending on what you are playing whether it's an odd front um, tight front under front over front here like uh, typically this is what what all my images are and that's why too if you've ever seen my playbooks with front coverages i try not to give up front because it's really up to you what you want to run uh behind it uh so again when we get a tight end so going back to our tight end if we get a tight end let's say the tight end is weak okay and this is this is starting to become a trend with offenses is putting that tight end weak especially to the boundary when you're playing seven man spacing and they're really making you define it are you playing seven man spacing or are you playing eight man spacing? Are you playing middle of the field close and you're going to get that safety down there right now? Or are you trying to buy some depth and you play some seven man spacing and you're trying to steal some gaps? Cause what they like to do is they like to take that tight end and start airing them to the flat. And now, especially if they put the running back back there, because again, your overhangs and seven man spacing are going to be your nickel and they're going to be your, your safety away from the two receiver side. So typically here, you want him, if you have a stack backfield, you have him, right? You have that safety out of the fit. He's going to be kind of over, over that and real slow. He's going to be in that glance area, flat footed, and then really kind of hold that area because that's what you're getting. You're getting like insert, 
power and then they're trying to run the glance right there they're trying to get that safety to slam down so if you're a seven man spacing world and you're trying to keep everything slow then that's kind of what we that's kind of where that safety gets toyed with and then how are you defending those out routes now if we're constantly getting pushed with the tight end to the flat we can cloud it but again do you want your boundary safety automatically always on that receiver because then they can give you what I call bait routes. And we'll talk about this when we get to cloud, they'll just give you those little bait arrows and throw the fade route and hit the, hit the whole shot or curl up behind it. And that safety's bailing out and now you're in trouble. So again, they can play a bunch of games here. Base way camp rules is we call it sync. So if, if the safety, if the, if the tight end attacks out, he's going to start sinking down. All sync is, is a step replaced, but down, right? Uh, if we're really worried about it, we can play thumbs which is just inverted sky. So he's just already down corner. Just knows I have, I have to take a step back and a step inside and I have to play all of the vertical and number one, I'm, I'm going to have help underneath, but we are still playing split field coverage. I like a 30, 30 with the backers because one, it helps you with any kind of creeper sim that you're going to run. And then two, it's just an even, it just gets them in an even set. And I don't give any kind of coverage indicator. A lot of defenses will push, to the tight end, getting a 40 and a 10 to the tight end. I'm not a big fan of that just because just because it, it gets you into trouble. And, and I think I think offenses can tell what the coverage is, especially off of if you're pushed. They know that somebody's going to have to fill that opposite gap. So you're probably playing three buzz. Now they know what coverage you're in. If you're if you're in the 30s, oh well, they're playing seven man spacing. Now we know we got quarter. So I I try and stay away from that. Trying I want a static look every time. I want the offensive coordinator every single time that he turns on film and he's looking at formations is like, well, pre snap there are no tells. Everything looks the exact same. It's kind of what you're seeing in the NFL with all these teams doing everything from too high. Uh, so again. Why weak? We want to be aggressive. He's fit support. He's going to be your D-gap fitter. He's going to be in charge of anything to out. He's in charge of the tight end. I like to think of anytime there's a tight end, it turns into kind of meg quarters. So we're playing almost like a meg quarters for lock to a tight end, and then we're playing regular sky to the two receiver side. If we get a slot away, so we're getting three by one, out of kind of our 11 personnel wide in the court. Now he's playing a poach technique. Poach is not solo. And I've talked about solo before. Solo is when it's a push coverage. We're pushing the coverage to the three by one side, a direct vertical release. I don't consider a slotted tight end a direct vertical release because he's probably coming the other way, right? He's probably running a split zone. He's running an insert. He's running counter. Something's coming back away from him. And so then I want that to be a flat foot read. You can get in trouble. And I've seen this before on film before is those safeties are flat foot read and they start peeking back at the mesh and they get that wide pop. The moment that they feel like that boundary safety isn't honoring your tight end, that's when you're going to get the wide pop. So for me, it's a flat foot read eyes on him. If he stays front side, I want to close the post. If he comes back to me, I want to sink down. That way I can assist with this. It's a slow thing. Again, this is seven man spacing. This is slow. He's not slamming down because the moment you start slamming down, this is the moment you're going to start getting the glance routes. That, that to me is the biggest thing. And what we tell the will here too, is he's a vertical hook player. So I'm reading two. If two goes out, I need to take it from the backfield. I'm not worried about the tight end. If, because if the tight end is over here and he pushes, the safety is going to take it. So I'm worried that these guys are funneling the back. The safety is going to take the tight end. I want backers on the back. I want DBs on receivers. That's what I want. So if we get him across, he's going to sink down. He would then get the vertical hook. It almost plays out like a pseudo cover three, but it's not playing cover three. It's just inverted sky. And we can play mess. We can press these guys, but just for camp rules, we're playing off coverage. Anytime I get an online tied in he's on the line that's when we want to now play regular sky or mix right now it's a vertical threat i'm not flat-footed i need to make sure that i'm i'm reading him he's a vertical threat i need to re any kind of vertical art i need to collect it okay we're essentially playing mix to the tight end and notice if you're watching this on youtube and just for context for those listening on a podcast every time i get two receivers I'm just putting sky and I'm putting a yellow box over that to let everybody know we're not messing with this at all. This is exactly what we have. So if we have the running back to the two receiver side, we will play what I call a cheat because we don't want 
the same linebacker in the box fit. So the boundary safety now is going to be primary fit. If the running back is weak or strong, depending on how you call it, if the running back is to the tight end, then we want to play 30, 30, because now it's almost, it, they're, they're trying to push us over here and they can play games. And I need that little linebacker over here to play that wall too and play that triangle coverage that we're going to get. So again, if I get an inline tight end and it's two by two, typical offense running back away from the tight end. I've got my two receivers outside. It's a pro set. Boundary safety is going to be primary C gap or primary D gap, depending on how you want to play that. Typically what you were going to play is we're going to get in a six technique and he, that defensive end is going to close that, that C gap will have a tackle in, in, in the uh, B gap. We'll have a nose in the A and we'll play heavy technique uh, to the running back. Uh, so we'll have, we'll have the DN closing the B gap. Mike is in the C will is in the A and that lets that boundary safety play in that D gap right there so that to me is the the, the biggest change if we get a, the running back to the tight end now we're pushing it over we're still playing the same rules we can get in a nine technique that just puts the boundary safety into the primary c gap if you're getting a lot of stretch um because uh, we've played teams like that um alito who's a, a really good program around here they had the mcclendon kid who's now at alabama and they would just they would get the tight end they'd run stretch all the time we we would play with a nine that way we could have a solid edge and everything would peel back up into that c gap uh, allowing those backers kind of have an aiming point in that boundary safety to get down there anytime we get three by one i call this tray so it's tight end trips i get i get tray set that's when we're playing solo solo is an active coverage it's not passive. Poach is passive. It has a P in it. We're flat foot. We're weighted. It's a wait and see coverage. Solo is an active coverage. This is where you introduce, like, so when we get to the cover three section, your cheat steps, this is our cheat steps, which is essentially a, a three shuffles to the middle of the field. Don't cross the center. Um, when I was at Midlothian, worked under uh, a head coach that, that was a big flex bone guy. You just don't cross the center unless you absolutely have to because now you're going to get in trouble. The, I always introduce this. And I always run speed option on the first day that we do solo. And the reason why is because if they know you're pushing coverage to trips, they're going to run the speed option back. Uh, and so that's a lesson that you always have to make sure that your kids understand that safety understands is as I'm working over here, if I see speed option, I got to buy that back and you're going to be late and it's going to be fine. Uh, but as a base rule, we want to check under. So we have the five and the three, here, the D end will be able to kind of climb and play midpoint, allowing that safety to come back and allowing that wheel to get back on that speed option. It's a lock call for that corner. He's not going to have any help. It is mess. Okay. So if one does run underneath right now, he's not chasing it, but he is locked on number one if he goes vertical. So it's a mess technique, man, except short. We can play it as mod or we can play it as press. I prefer not to press when you don't have direct vertical help over the top. All right, let's talk about cloud coverage. Now we're going to transition into our triangle coverage. We just finished the quarter section. That's our box coverage. Uh, that is going to be our base. Cloud is typically ran when two receivers are tight. So when do we use cloud coverage? Number one, number two are close. Has a C in it. They're covered. They're close together. Clouds are close to the ground. That's why we call it cloud. You can't see the sky. Safety can reach number one on a fade route. So really, if you were to look at film objectively, and you get a lot of 10 personnel two by two, it looks like you're running cover six, right? Traditional cover six, quarter, quarter, half, okay? But you're running, the, the way that my system works is a little differently. I'm not tagging that. I'm not saying we are always running the cover two side away from the passing strength or like the Fangio system, I want the cover two to the passing strength quarters away. It's essentially a kind of a, an amoeba defense, meaning that we are going to fit exactly what the offense gives us so if we get two receivers to the boundary they're going to be close typically you're not going to get two verticals into the boundary because they're so close so what do you run you run cloud because you're going to get rub routes so what are some other names for cloud to read palms clamp blue triangle however you call it that this is what we are talking about it is to read it is not covered two. this is not madden football that corner is not taking everything to the flat. If they were to have a running back to that side and he pushes, the backer is taking the back. The corner is sitting in the intermediate. He is carrying the vertical in number one unless two pushes out. He is not worried about three. 
at all. I think that is one of the things that you can get into trouble. Uh, and I think where the NFL, even though they're running a lot of zone two, they're telling those corners, do not undress that safety. You do not come off and let the, let the ball bring you down. So if you want to run zone two, make sure that you are teaching that corner uh, what I call a squat technique, meaning that you are not coming off of number one unless you uh, the ball brings you down. Now, I run squat as a complement to cloud within, and that's a tag within the cloud family because we're getting a lot of bluff routes with two. We're getting the fake bubbles. We're getting the fake arrows. We're getting pushes to try and get the corner down, and they're not really throwing that. They want the whole shot, the curl. They want something underneath of the safety because they know he's going to get off of that. So to me, it's important the backers take the back. Now here in the image, if you're looking at it, on YouTube. Uh, and for those of you on the podcast, I have two receivers into the boundary. We don't have a running back. So there is no push alert. The backer is going to be wall two. The corner is only coming off if two goes out. It's a feather technique. So that's a shuffle. That's a hot foot shuffle. If you like a kick step, that's an inch technique. It's a catch mentality. I want to be up head up to inside. Uh, if beyond the numbers, if he's way out there towards the red line, which is that fade line that you see a lot of times on the offensive on the offensive uh, fields, uh, we don't want to go all the way out there. We don't want to be outside leverage, so we're just going to go ahead and, like always, stay attached to the numbers. So. Our backer is a wall two player. He's going to carry. He's going to deliver anything back, especially with the, the running back away. The mic is going to be blind, so he's going to have to deliver that back. Stay connected to the offensive tackle. I think this is where teams get in trouble. Base way that you teach everything is inside eye, inside eye, tip to tip, right? Inside number two. The problem that happens into the boundary is that that safety can get pulled out. Now they're over split. You, you get pulled out. There's so much space in the middle of the field. Um, a great example of this, this is uh, several years ago, um, Notre Dame and Clemson were playing in the college football playoffs. And Clemson was playing with the rules of the Nebraska uh, of the Notre Dame safety is that they would oversplit that Notre Dame safety. He was taught. That's what he was taught. The inside shade of number two, he would work all the way out there. They just run a little bang, bang, eight little glance route right inside quarterback throws it. There's nobody in the middle of the field, right? Cause you're playing split field coverage. So I, you know, and I got text messages from my players at Midlothian from it. And they were like, coach, did you see the game? Why are they doing that? And look, that's again, when you're coaching, you can get yourself into trouble when you run black and white ideas, right? Black and white techniques. You are only doing this because of this at this kind you know, we, we only break on uh, our vertical is at five yards. If it's past five yards, back. once offenses know what that is, if you create a black and white rule, the offense is going to figure it out. And then they're just going to hammer away at it. So I like to live in the gray. Football is a very gray sport. Uh, and so we teach like for verticals, it's OVO over the overhang. We don't teach hard decks. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of hard decks. That's just personal preference for me. Okay. So in cloud coverage, what does it mean? Quarterback takes all a uh, corner takes all the out of number two. If two goes out, the safety now has all of number one. Uh, what are some new terms? that we're using here trap just means when number two goes out, I'm trapping it. I'm nailing down on it. Trap is a physical term, right? I'm not a big trap coverage guy. I just don't, I want corners defending receivers. I think you can get burned a lot of times. If you, if you play a hard trap, the only time we will play hard traps is if I know I'm getting a screen and I'll give a trap tag. And the, the, the difference in technique is now I'm aggressively stepping to the slot. If the slot works out, I just take them. I hammer down on them. I trap them. If the slot works vertical, I'm going to hinge back into the field and I'm going to climb back to the hip of number one, uh, reading the quarterback. Uh, safety then has to work the midpoint, which again, now your wall two player has to carry verticals. I'm not a big fan of that. So I stay away from trap. Key just means the, the receiver who dictates coverage switch, right? So the key here is number two, right? Even in sky, we're king number two for a quick read or for any kind of any kind of tell on what the route is going to be. But in cloud, now I really have to key number two. It's not that kind of passive like, okay, maybe I can get a read on it. Maybe I can't, but I'm really in charge of number one for the corner. We are king number two. We already know match carry deliver up, out, and in. We know what cap is. We know what post control is, and we know what a stair step technique is. Let's go into positions and then how that looks, alignment, assignment, technique, right? 
I want a closed stance. Now, I will eventually allow the corners to make everything look like off sky uh, once they get good at it. But for some to slow it down a bit, we want to have a closed stance. I want no tilt, shoulders and feet square, tuck position, sitting in the chair. It's catch mentality. I'm going to get in trail position. I want to be physical with the receiver as he goes vertical. I think another issue, and I've had, if you have not played corner before or you have not played DB, you probably don't understand how hard it is to go hard through number one on a fade out all the time. It's not always possible. If that kid wants to give you a super speed release and get way outside, now I'm I'm losing my leverage on the number two receiver just so I can make it. I tell my guys, if you can get a shot on number one, get it. If you can't, I'm not worried about it. I don't want you to overplay number one on the speed release. So again, we are, we are working a feather technique. Uh, I've had, and again, I've talked about this before. I've had a, a two division one corners when I was at Horn. One plays at UTEP, the other plays at SFA. The one that was a, a the one that went to UTEP, he could feather off. A six foot, six one, feather, beautiful. He was a technician. The kid at SFA, he was taller, six three, super fast, physical freak, but it, he struggled with that foot speed. So I transitioned him to a kick step. It's an inch technique. It's catch mentality. It's scooch technique if you're familiar with the saving system. So do not live and do not make your guys do the exact same thing because we're all built different. OK, so I've got I've had kids that could they could do anything. They flew hips. They could do any technique I wanted to. I mean, and then and then you kind of give them that freedom to do that. Then I've had other kids that really struggle to backpedal. Right. Or they struggle with the feather. So you have to give them tools to make them successful and don't throw your players away just because they can't backpedal. I think that's a that's a big issue within the DB world, kind of the dirty little secret of the DB world that a lot of guys don't talk about is that not everybody can backpedal. So don't make them backpedal. You are dealt the players you are dealt. Even if you recruit some of these kids, you think, oh, these kids are really, it's, if you're college and you think, oh man, this kid is really athletic. You get to him and you're like, oh, he's a little bit stiffer than I thought he was. Okay. Have a technique to help them out, to maximize it. Again, I use the example all the time. The kid that went to SFA was probably a better athlete than the kid that went to UTEP. He just wasn't as polished. That's why he went to SFA. But he was a physical freak. I mean, just absolute freak. The coaches, they'll DM me or text me every once in a while and just be like, oh, my gosh, this kid's an absolute freak. Um, so to me, there's a physical specimen that can't backpedal. So what do you do? You teach them the kick step. You give them tools to help them better. And that's that's kind of where we're at. Uh I transition once I teach to read and I teach cloud. Now I've taught the press technique. I'm a big believer in the soft press. Let those receivers foot fire and do everything. I don't mind a hard press if I know I am just physically better than that kid. Or if we watched on film and that kid really doesn't have much of a release menu. If it is a really good receiver, we're just going to let him foot fire let him show us because that's what I'm working. I'm working releases with these guys. When we're working press, I'm mostly working releases. If I, and, and I like to always say it, if, if I get a hard outside jam, that means the receiver's going back inside. If I get a hard inside jam, he's going back outside. We try and we try and kind of not necessarily mirror it, but go opposite, stay in that line. And really, if you stay on that midpoint, and you stay on that line. Once that, once you foot fire, that receiver's not going to, once he gets to his second, third, now, now he has no idea what he's doing. He's just going to get into his route, and that's what we want. So when we get into a press stance and a cloud stance, it's going to be the exact same. I want eyes on the hip, elbows at a 90, knees bent, tuck position, closed stance. I want my nose over my toes. Again, tuck position. If we're in press, it's a yard, a yard and a half. It's a quote-unquote soft press, mess press. That's what we want. Hands at knee level or on the table. Again, I'm not a big prayer hand guy. I don't want those hands up. We don't want to look like T-Rex or a praying mantis. Uh, uh, we don't want the flippers. We don't want the wings. Use those towels as a, as a nice little drill. What are the different press techniques? So now that we're talking press, we're talking cloud. What are the different press techniques that we have? The terms that I use press means that I'm outside leverage. And this is a cloud term. OK, press is a cloud term. Mess is a quarters term. If I want to play 
press coverage, I'll give a press tag. We are outside leverage, outside hand jam, funnel everything. If we want to make it look like we are playing man, but we're really playing cover two, this is that, that Saban five Cougar stuff. This is the peak technique. I want to play inside. I want to press. I want to make it look like man, but then I'm peaking the moment that I get to about five yards looking to trap number two coming out. Cone is another, is an, is a bracket concept. We want to be outside leverage. I'm playing all the fade. I'm a very loose press. I want to play all of that fade, let any kind of inside release, the safety is going to nail down on it. Meg just means inside press is man to man, right? Lock. Okay. And then we have our bail technique where I want to be, I want to kind of be head up to outside and then I want to bail vertically. So we have our sky cloud and our bracket families within our press technique. Mess is just really, Hey, we're playing mess technique today. Meg means it's an inside. So Meg and Mess are going to look the exact same. Meg just means I take him everywhere he goes. Mess means I have him until he goes shallow, which typically if he's out wide, he ain't going shallow. So you're taking a man, man coverage anyway. So let's get into playbook, how this looks. Corner is going to be at five yards. It's a feather technique, kick step, scooch, however you want to label that. Split rules. I'm a little different in the way that I like cloud. I like an inside alignment. I want to play man. We're not worried about the running back or number three pushing to the flat. I don't have to take the flat. This is Madden. We're playing man on the receiver unless two goes out. So if two goes in or two goes vertical, I tell those guys snap inside. And that's why I teach the peak technique as one of the first things, because we are playing an inside alignment. One of the problems with running cover two. And so again, I go back to it. If you are a two read base team you're getting a ton of slants because you're probably playing outside leverage it's hard to play a slant with against good receivers big physical receivers if you are outside of leverage so i always try and play it i want sky and cloud to look almost identical i don't want there to be a big tell in it so once we learn kind of the basics i'll transition from a feather because i want to teach press so i'm trying to I try and put everything in a progression. Once we get everything in installed, then I'm teaching everybody to kick step off of that so that our sky can look like cloud. So if we want to play everything off, we can. If we want to play everything press, we can. Again, it goes back to your kids. What can they do? What can they not do? If we get a lot of sucker routes, and I started noticing this about five years ago, a lot of teams in Texas play a lot of cover too. So if you want to manipulate the corner, you do a couple of things. One, you do what I call a pause bubble, meaning that the receiver doesn't move. He just sits there and then the quarterback throws it to him. One goes vertical, the safety in the corner are dropping vertical. What we started doing when we saw that was any kind of hesitation by that, we considered that an outstep and we would hammer that and, and teams quit doing that to us. Then what we started doing, because early in the year, we would just saw you off because we're playing, we're playing base rules. And I had a really good, I had really good corners. They got really good at cloud is that any time that you would get a bubble, we would just go hammer it. Well, that leaves you for whole shots. So we had a team later in the year actually start running bubbles with curl routes, knowing that that safety, because again, you overcoach this stuff, is that, that safety knows any out of two, I'm climbing to the vertical. I'm getting the fade out, right? Well, what they would do is they would curl up in that whole shot that will linebacker is is kind of playing that wall too. He hasn't worked out that way because he's a late push and there's a nice little pocket right there. Uh, so my thing that we wanted, we wanted to always be able to play what the, the offense was giving us. And we wanted to defend slant routes from cover two. We didn't want to be able to give that away. So our squat technique, again, if you are a true zone two team, squat technique is a great way to teach it and label it. In fact, if you go to the Fangio system, that's how they teach that. That's the term that they use. They use squat. If they want to play hard press, their press technique, what I call it, is smash. They want to smash the receiver. Don't address your safety. If you get pushed by three, we don't have to nail down on it unless the ball is thrown. Uh, so, so essentially, if I get a bubble, the corner is just going to trail off. Um, and we got, in fact, I had a kid. He ended up with three picks later in the year off of playing squat technique because these, these quarterbacks – think that you're running cover two and then they throw the ball and they're throwing back shoulder phase because they know the safety's capping and they'll throw it right to the corner in fact i had a quarterback didn't even look i mean he just caught the ball threw it thinking that they were running a bubble fade corners and trail technique because he's not breaking down on anything until that ball is released and the quarterback just throws that back shoulder fade 
right to the corner. We got we got several picks off of that. Off of the cover two family, I always try and teach the kids what is a stack, what is a bunch, and what is a dirty stack, and what is a dirty bunch. If we get two receivers within five yards of each other, it's a stack, and we count that as a stack. We know we're getting a rub route. We're either railing it or clouding it. We're expecting some sort of rub route. If we get three receivers, and this is typically what you'll see to a tight end or two receivers into the boundary with a running back, and they kind of bring everybody in tight they're creating a dirty bunch if we know we're getting bunch calls and we want to play it like bunch we want to play true triangle then we will give a bunch alert and everybody now we're playing true zone cover two so again flat the corner's going to have the flat but we want to carry that's that that's that it's an automatic squat technique the wheels has no push at all He's not worried about the the running back pushing to the flat. He doesn't have to take it, and the mic is just going to – so it's my kind of way to get into kind of a a pseudo Tampa 2 right there. Um, And then, again, if you get a tight end, and that's a big one that a lot of teams like to do. They like to push, tight end hooks up. That's that's an easy way for teams to run snag concepts is that they, they push the back or spacing concepts. They push the back. They snag the tight end. They get that big power forward kid catching the ball, and then now it's an automatic 10 yards because that safety is going to come off the table. So if we do that, we want to get we want to get that defensive end in a five technique and really allow that tight end to, to let, let's see what that release is going to be. So those are the basics of sky and cloud. That's how we teach middle of the field open coverage. As we transition, we will continue to go through different coverage aspects bracket trips our next episode is going to be on trips coverages building off of what we have here eventually getting to bracket trap coverages and then a simple way to teach match three and all of those rules if you're interested in any of this the self-titled book match quarters goes over a lot of this stuff make sure to follow me on all social media subscribe to the youtube channel make sure that you like and share the podcast Um, and again if you're interested I've got a lot of this stuff on the Match Quarters book that you can find in Amazon. Follow on the Substack for the best in defensive content every week. Thank you.